Hi students, uh, for this next activity we are going to be working with a teapot and an OmniLight. Uh, so the OmniLight is kind of in front of the teapot, um, but it's probably not going to be seen uh, once we zoom in. It kind of doesn't fit in the shot. Um, so what we're going to do in our next set of activities here is we are going to not only um, change the look of the teapot using um, patterns, but we are also going to actually physically give it some texture. Uh, so let's take a look at what that's going to look like. So we're going to go up to our material editor again, and we are going to select our compact editor, and we started a fresh scene, so everything is back to square one. So um, let's do something weird. Let's uh, assign a bitmap to our teapot here and we are going to find our texture library um, doo -doo -doo -doo. and looking for textures there it is and all different options here so let's see hmm how's it gonna look if we make our teapot look like it's made out of concrete All right, so we're going to move back up. We're going to show our material in the viewport, and we're going to make sure that the material is assigned. So there's our cement teapot. Let's take a look at it. Weird. All right, cool. Um, so we can uh, let's go in here, and I'm actually going to... Um, insert another map if you will so let's go back to our we used our smoke map we're going to use the smoke map and what i'm going to do is i'm basically going to push the cement down one level and by adding the smoke map in between that'll allow me to do a mixture between the concrete and another texture so what i'm going to be going for is sort of a mossy concrete look okay so we're going to keep the old map and what that means is keep the concrete as a sub map of the new map. Huh, what does that mean? Let's go all the way back up. So we go to our diffuse. Now we have our smoke below that. And now we see our concrete is one of our options. So let's go ahead and add a bitmap to the other side. And gotta scroll up, find bitmap. And let's go back out and find a natural, let's see. I've got a moss texture in there. There we go. So if we open our sphere, we can see um, immediately that our smoke map is giving us um, kind of a blotchy um, moss um, effect here. So I'm going to make our size smaller and start sort of experimenting with... Uh, with the look of this here and I might change my mind on the smoke map um, I might switch it to a noise map in fact I think I'm going to it's not giving me the exact effect I want so I'm just gonna simply click on the map name and click on noise and um, we're gonna discard the old map and likewise I've got to go in and add my concrete in my moss back again so There's our moss, and let's add our concrete, another bit map. And I'm just going back out to find it in the man made materials folder. There's our concrete. Okay. Looks a little weird, but we are going to adjust it. So there are different styles of noise that you can work with. And again, by swapping the um, order of the colors um, you get a different effect so since we want primarily concrete with a little bit of moss mixed in um, we're going to leave it this way um, we can also make the size of our blobs bigger or smaller and let's take a look at how fractal looks and eh, not quite what we're going for there nope let's keep it at turbulence Okay, um, so some other things that you can do to adjust the appearance 
is adjusting the low and high value. So let's take a look at what that does. So if we bring our low value up, it's going to show more of the concrete, more of the white texture. Now let's bring that back to zero. Likewise, if we bring the high value down, that is going to show more of the dark texture, the blacker one, which happens to be assigned to the moss map. So as we bring that down, we're gonna start seeing um, that moss um, stand out much more um, against the background there. You can see that some of this, I just swapped it. I just swapped the colors and I swapped the type of noise. And there's a little bit of an art to this. Um, there's no easy answer to achieving the effect that you want necessarily. Some of it comes down to um, playing around with the sliders and kind of uh, getting the effect that you're looking for. So i um, not going to get too crazy with that, but that's not too bad. I'm actually going to bring the moss. I'm going to tile it a tiny bit because it's way too big scale. See, now we have that look of um, a more mossy surface there. Going back up. Okay. So let's make sure, and there's our teapot there. Let's do a quick render, see how it looks. Not too bad, right? And I'm going to zoom in a tiny bit more. Whoop. And render again so we can get an up close view. So yeah, so we've got a little bit of mossiness kind of hinting itself in there, but I kind of want it to look a little bit more. Um, so we're gonna go back into our map and we are going to adjust our values um, a little bit more. So let's bring that lower value up and that's gonna make our moss pop. Remember, bringing that low value up is going to um, make that darker value more apparent. So let's see how that looks. Yeah, that's looking a little more moldy. Render. There we go. So, great. So we've adjusted the appearance of the teapot color-wise, but there really is no actual texture. It doesn't really look like their moss is bumpy or anything like that. So let's go back up to our main level of our main shader, and we're going to bring our sphere back up. And um, we are going to scroll down because there's an area of every shader texture thingy called the map section, and there's all sorts of fun stuff in here, um, one of which is something called bump. And the bump map is basically your ability to um, create an actual physical texture. And we're gonna pick something really weird to start so you can see what I'm talking about. So let's grab, uh, we're gonna grab the cellular pattern. This is one of those patterns and when you first look at it, it's like, what's the point of that? But you could see how if you add um, this, you could achieve like a dinosaur skin effect or something like that. Um, we can change it to, to chips to kind of give it a more um, crinkly, um, crinkly uh, plastery effect. Um, so you can see that by applying um, a pattern to the bump channel, um, your shape goes from being merely colored to having like a physical um, pattern texture to it. Okay, so um, let's take a look at what we can do here. So let's go back in, and I cleared out a map from earlier, and um, what I'd like to do is kind of just give our surface like a little bit of roughness to it, just a tiny bit. It's going to be very subtle, um, but it's going to take that teapot from looking totally smooth to kind of having a little bit of a concrete look to it. Um, so I am going to use the use the cellular which might have been the one that we had earlier um but we are going to take a look at what we can do to kind of achieve the effect we want so i'm going to make those increments very small and so now you can see uh that 
now that I've made those increments really, really tiny, it does kind of give that effect of um, that concrete surface. And I'm just gonna love to play around with the shaders there and see that um, by increasing the spread by a little bit, it sort of flattens it out and kind of gives it that more realistic concrete uh, texture. So let's take a look and see how that looks. Yeah, not bad. So we can see up here along the edge of our uh, shape, particularly um, where there's an opportunity for there to be shadows, we start seeing um, some of that detail in our teapot that we did not have before. And again, a bump map is very subtle. Oftentimes 30 is too high. Um, I'm going to dial that back to 20 and take a look at what that looks like. Nice. Okay, cool. Um, so that is that. So basically in this tutorial we um, took a look at how we can use a pattern map such as noise to mix together um, two other uh, bitmap images to kind of give us a realistic texture aka the mossy concrete on the teapot and then we also explored the bump map and looked at how applying one of these basic 3D Studio Max built-in patterns um, to the bump map channel will give our object an actual um, appearance of having imperfections in the surface, which uh, increases the amount of realism uh, that we have. So that's it for now, and uh, see you in the next tutorial.